I finally made it down here. I'm about to burn up. It's so humid and hot. Holy moly. Whew. Isn't it? Can you see why now I love this place? Looks like a bunch of bait or something under that tree on the water. Silence. Just the nature. And it's a lot farther downhill than I remember because it's been some years since I've been here. And uh, it was a lot farther than I was hoping because it's so dry right now, the water level's down. Oh, that water feels so good. Oh man, this is gonna be so nice. Got the new paint job on the kayak. This is actually the first trip out in it since I painted it and I got my YouTube name on the front right there. Um, and I don't have half this, I don't got none of the stuff put back on except for the accessory rails since painting it. <gasps> so. My paddle strap ain't there, so I only brought half of it, which I really don't need it unless I have a major malfunction. And uh, I do got my accessory rail, but I don't use it. <laughs> got my tip it. It's eight pound. I hope it's wide enough so that it don't sink the fly. But I'm gonna get set up and rigged up. I'm gonna get a fly tied on and some tip it. And I'm gonna get the camera set up. And I'm gonna get on down the river and start fishing while I got time. Cause it's getting late. It's getting dark and uh, there ain't a stitch of wind. The only thing I can hope is that the deer flies don't get me too bad. I was gonna catfish a little bit, but I decided not to, not to worry about catching live bait. I also had decided I could also catch a brim and cut it up if I wanted to. But there ain't a stitch of current right now. It's dead calm, I ain't. Man, it's been years since I seen it this calm. This is the area in the beach uh, of the place of the church property. See, if them idiots had to ruin that for everybody, and whoever they are, you know who you are, you are idiots and pieces of crap for doing that. For trashing this place out and being so disrespectful that now nobody can use this, except for the people and the members of the church only. Beautiful place. I used to call this right here RJ's Beach. <laughs> it used to just be me all the time, but then all these young knuckleheads started coming down here and they back right down the boat ramp here, spin tires all in the river, do donuts all up there in the little tiny parking lot, and leave the trash and their camp crap all up and down here. But look how gorgeous that is. And see, now that nobody comes down here, it's all grown up, it's just disappearing. And the floods have caused this sandbar to rise up bigger than it's ever been. And it's caused this bank to be steeper than it's ever been. See that beautiful sandy bank right there? That's what I used to call RJ's Beach. There used to be a little trail that come over here all the way to that dark corner right there where that black soil starts. And this beach extended all the way down here. Somebody honking at my truck on the road. Um, and you could stand right here and fish this bend over here, this deep curve. I used to catch so many catfish out here. Hey y'all, it's still, it's hot, it's muggy. I'm about to take my shirt off, I'm slimy. I'm sweating like a pig. This place is beautiful and quiet and pristine. You can see it's got these big sandy beaches up here. It's just gorgeous. But when the water's low like this, I like to come fly fishing with a popping bug and burn these brim up. And when there's a little bit of current rolling, I'll get up in here and catfish. There's tons of, well there used to be tons of log jams on each side and you could go up current of those log jams and drift baits back in there and just slay catfish. I've spent a lot of time on this river and there's tons of structure and habitat. You can see all these cypress knees and logs and roots. All that's typically underwater. So it provides a lot of shelter and a lot of structure for the fish. But the river is absolutely drying up. We are in the biggest drought I've seen in a long time, man. We're, we're really in a multi-year drought here. But anyways, I'm going to get to pedaling. 
I am loving the color of this kayak now, and people can see me a lot better. I had it painted camouflage for duck hunting, but I'm not going to be duck hunting out of it this year. I'm going to have a boat, so I won't have to use this. So I went ahead and put the bright colors on it where boaters can see me. It's safer. Um, just so much safer. And I got my YouTube channel name on it, Pinco 101 That way while I'm hauling it and while I'm out and about, people can see it. It might make them curious to check the channel out. But anyways, I am swiftly approaching uh, one of my favorite spots to fly fish. So I'm going to get rigged up and get ready. Get these cameras set up. Come on. So I'm working it, you know, 10 feet off the bank. It's a big old stump in the water and some underwater brush here. Got to be a fish in there. Got him. Heck yes. Heck yes. Nice brim. This is a nice fish. Oh my god. There's a big old stump in the water and some underwater brush here. There's got to be a fish in there. Got him. Heck yes. Heck yes. Nice brim. This is a nice fish. Oh my gosh, let me get away from it. This must be a nice brim, oh yeah. This is what we came for right here. Look at that bluegill. Gosh, what a fish. copperhead boys he's got parasites on him but that's what happens I think when the water gets real low look how beautiful and big that bluegill is that is a trophy bluegill on the fly he's round all right I'm gonna give him the release gosh look at that straight up a hand-sized bluegill he was ready. Got a nice little overhanging branch scenario here. Now coming up, oh, I'm on. Now coming up, oh, I'm on. Damn, I turned my head for two seconds. Little bitty, itty, bitty, baby, bitty bluegill. Now if I was going to do some catfishing today, that's the size one I would like to put on the hook. I won't go down there. Jump out already. I was about to say, so there was a fish under that tree then. Big old stump there with some water going under it. Gotta be a fish right here, right? Got him. Not a bad fish. Mm. Ooh. Check it out. He choked that one. Got it. Beautiful brim. Beautiful brim. He gone. All right. Get that back out there. Oh, God. 
gosh dang. Yep, they're in there. Little guy. Gosh. Brim are so beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful little red belly. Any more takers? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Feels so bad for that fish. Oh. Oh. Oh my God, he was so tiny. When I, I thought he missed it and I went to back cast to go in and I just see the fish come flying by me. Oh my gosh, look at that little guy. <laughs> so little. I don't even know what this is. Maybe a little pumpkin seed. He's got dots on it. Maybe it's a green sunfish. I don't know. Perfect bait is what he is. He's been through a lot, guys. I feel like if we just cut the line or something, he would have died. But on that line, that had not been checked in days, was a giant flathead. Oh, I'm on. Oh, another skipper. Damn. <laughs> Man, them little fish, you don't know they're on. Go to back cast again to put it back in there. And they come flying through the air. He was like, eh, I don't know. I was like, well, you'd know. Get a nice one. There's a nice one. Pull me out to the big water, buddy. Oh, yeah. Pretty red belly. Beautiful red belly. Might throw it over here on this corner under this tree. Oh, I see some deer.
not believe in that. That's a pretty big dose for North Carolina, Eastern North Carolina. Wow. Oh, they're still up there. They just went over the hill. Wow. I'm not believing that. That's crazy, man. Crazy. Bow range. I could have literally shot that deer with my bow. That's amazing. Thank you, Lord, for that. That was awesome. Mm -mm -mm. Well, let's do a little more fishing before I head back. There's actually some pretty good current here now. It's turning, going back out. It's crazy. Come on. Oh my gosh. Damn, I just caught a catfish immediately. That's actually a really nice blue cat. Not really nice, but for that little setup it was. Holy moly, right in front of where those deer were. I don't know if I can. Damn. On that tiny little piece of worm. I mean, a tiny little piece of worm.
Now, you talking about a good eating size blue cat? It's really got me thinking about it. Check that out. Catfish nuggets sound really good right now. But I'm gonna let him go. There he goes. The slime is like blue. He gelled my line up immediately. Look at that. That shit ain't coming off. I mean, instantly. When I set the hook, I was like, oh, wait. And he jumped. I thought it was a bass. The way he jumped out of the water like that. Come up here to these old cypress knees. Gosh, I don't know if y'all can see how white that bank is right there. That river bank right there is so white. beautiful sandy banks I've ever seen on a river. Oh my gosh. That was a bass. He hit my cork. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Big old red belly. Holy moly. Pretty red belly. Big old red brim. I'm getting another one. Well, it's been a beautiful day in the river in the evening. I only had a couple hours to come out to try and make a video. And I hope y'all enjoy this. I'm trying to get some views, man. The shorts have been doing okay, but I just have not been getting the views that I hoped I would. Um, Another thing is nobody hits the like button, man. It's free. It don't cost anybody a thing. All it takes is a little. And myself, I know I'm guilty of forgetting. Um, so what I have started doing as a YouTube viewer is I do that first. When I find a video, like the people that I watch, which is, um, let's see, Angler Up with Brant, Bearded Brad, um, Bama Beach Bum, Bama Saltwater, all those guys, I love their videos, I love their style, I just, they're great people, uh, Hood Fish Entertainment, who of recent hasn't been posting much, I'm thinking because of that incident he was in, um, but those guys that I do watch, when I see their video pop up there, I'm subscribed to all of them. When I click on their video, as soon as it starts loading and comes on, I hit the like button. So that's just so I remember, because I want to support those guys. And I know that the only way to do that is through liking and viewing their channel. So um, if anybody watches my videos and you like it, 
please don't forget to hit the like button. When these guys say it really helps out a ton when you hit the like button, they are not joking. Because what happens is, it doesn't matter if a thousand people view it, if you don't hit the like button, it doesn't get the video out for other people to see it, and then you don't get the views. I mean, I got some great fishing videos up that got like 20 views. 20 views, no likes. And it's hard doing this stuff. I used to just love fishing, period. Just going and fishing, not videoing. And one day I said, you know what? As much as I fish and as successful as I am at it, there's no reason why I shouldn't be videoing these trips. Um, and you know, a lot of people might not even hear this because most people don't even make it to the end of the video. But I said I should be videoing these trips and posting it to my YouTube channel because I started a channel about eight years ago with the intentions of putting hunting on there and trapping coyotes and bobcats. And then I never did. I did a couple videos. I did a how to clean a trigger fish and I did how to reset a coyote trap after you've caught a coyote. And then I never did it again. And that's because, well, I say eight years ago, it's probably longer than that. But believe it or not, not much before that, we didn't have these nice phones where you could do everything on it. And now we got these phones where it's a handheld computer, and you can do the video, the editing, and upload it on the same device. So you don't have to have a computer or anything. All you need is a phone. So I started recording all these trips, and I started getting some pretty cool shots, and not the best shots, but the best I can get right now with what I got. And I started editing these videos, which takes hours. Um, you would not believe what goes into the putting this online. And any fisherman who does YouTube will tell you, it's so much easier just to go fishing. Just to go fishing and enjoy the outdoors and enjoy the time without worrying about cameras, and getting the right angle and the shot and then coming home and editing for two hours and then uploading and then deleting and re-uploading and doing all this stuff it's so much easier just to go fishing and enjoy it because at heart just like every other fisherman who does youtube their main sole passion is fishing it ain't editing videos and recording because i'll be the first one to tell you before i started doing youtube i enjoyed fishing way more because I wasn't upset if I realized, oh crap, the camera wasn't on, or it flipped around to the wrong screen, or whatever. I never came home and was like, God, that fishing trip didn't count because I didn't get a good shot or a good angle. Any of us will tell you, I enjoyed the hell out of it way more before I was trying to video this crap. When it became more important for me to get the shot to show y'all than it did for me to have a good time, was when I started doing YouTube. And I've only been doing YouTube for a year. Look at that old turkey flying down the river. Just spooked it out of that tree. Of course it won't focus on what I'm trying to show you. But it is so much easier just to go enjoy yourself, catch a fish, not worry about cameras and the angle and what everybody thinks. But a part of me wants to contribute to YouTube because I I watch YouTube and there's a hundred million people with a fishing channel but there's only about five or six of them that are good deer meat for dinner blue gabe Bama beach bum uh, Bama salt water bearded brad and angler up with Brant. those are the top YouTube channels there's a couple other ones I, I feel so bad because I can't remember the one guy that makes those cinematic masterpieces and he just went down to Florida to do the big three on the fly rod and caught the freaking tarpon and the bonefish, another turkey, and was going. Look, a feather came out of it and it's coming down to the water. Oh, there it went. It just landed. I'm going to grab it. And uh, he makes cinematic masterpieces, and I'll remember his name after I get done with this video, but he's awesome too. feather just fell out of that turkey's ass <laughs> as it flew over the river what are the odds but um they're all great guys but they're the top youtubers and i'm trying to get to that point now i know they didn't get there in their first year but i look at some of these people's channels 
who have channels and they've only been doing it for a year and maybe they know how to work the algorithm and maybe they know what to do with the viewers and the, and the tags and the title and the fucking and the uh, thumbnail picture or whatever maybe they just know all that stuff better than me but I've been doing it for a year now I got like 300 videos up on YouTube I got several full length videos maybe a few of them are too long I don't know but I'm not getting any views and I really don't feel like it's the content I'm catching fish I'm getting fish on camera I'm hooking up um, most of it's salt water I did two freshwater fish fishing videos in a pond that got 10 times more views than anything else I got. So I'm like, damn, do y'all just wanna see fresh water or what? Cause salt water's <laughs> kinda my thing. And I just, it blows my mind that salt water would get 20 views on a full length video and a pond fishing day would get 350 views, which still ain't no views, but it's way more than I've been getting. I did a sheephead video the other day that got a couple hundred views. But even still in the, in the world of YouTube, a couple hundred views ain't doing it, it ain't cutting it. I'm trying to get monetized so I can get better equipment and bring this stuff to you, but at the rate I'm going, it might be four or five years before I get monetized because you gotta have at least a million views in 90 days on shorts or 500 subscribers and I've been doing this for a year and I still don't even got 500 subscribers I must be a boring individual that's all I got to say I don't know maybe that's what it is oh the other youtuber I love is uh Aaron Young Aaron Young has that ASMR vibe he's got such a cool soothing voice he does work. He's a freaking bang out photographer. He dives to the bottom of the ocean and spears the most delicious fish. Aaron Young. Welcome back, folks. It's Aaron Young. I love it. He's a great guy, man. And uh, I'll think of some others, but those guys really got it going on. And I'm trying to be more like them. I don't have the resources that those guys do to get out and fish the way they do, catching the cool stuff they do, but I'm, I'm working on it. Um, I got a boat and I finally got the trailer fixed so I'll be doing more offshore stuff near shore mainly like king mackerel Spanish mackerel Atlantic Benito false albacore cobia That type of thing trolling Jigging bottom fishing. I don't know if anybody wants to see that stuff or not, but I'm gonna find out And my channel has been mainly kayak based That's about to change. I know a lot of people do like to see the kayak fishing videos, but I'm fixing to get back in the boat, baby, because I'm gonna tell you right now, this paddling right here, it's cool and all, and I will still have a place for it. I'll still have a lot of fishing holes for it, especially salt water, man, where I just cannot get with that big old boat. But it ain't gonna be what I do solely no more. I can guarantee you that. There's been some days, buddy, where I've said, hmm, sure wish I didn't have to pedal back to the dang ramp about four miles or even two miles into a hard current, waves and wind, sitting eye level to the water with boats swamping the crap out of me. Now, I'm gonna be one of those boats, except for I ain't gonna be swamping people. I ain't gonna swamp no kayakers. I ain't, I ain't never gonna be in so big of a hurry that I got to swamp a whole family of people in their kayaks to get to where I'm going. Unless I'm dying, or somebody with me is dying, and I'm slowing down for people on the last day always have. But anyway folks, I'm going to quit flapping my jaws and wrap this up. I'm almost to the truck now, or almost to the hill. And I got to load this kayak up and all this junk over a hill and through the woods to the truck. I don't a gunshot or a mortar round. But anyways, I'll leave y'all with this little view right here. Hope y'all have enjoyed this. I hope y'all enjoyed this trip. A little bit of popping bug, fly, fly rod action. A little bit of float fishing. Come on. Just a quiet evening in the river. Some mullet out here jumping. About 35, 40 miles inland. That's <laughs> crazy. This is fresh water. This ain't no brackish. 
amazing, man.